Okay, here we go. Starting chapter 3, section 1. This is all about the powers of 10, which is uh, something I think most of you should be familiar with. So let me just put up something here really quick. If I, if I wrote 10 times 10 and asked you what the answer is, you would say? 100. Okay, notice that there's two zeros, and there's two zeros in the answer. If I said 27 times 10 and ask you what that was, Mr. Fall, what would you say? 270. Mr. Fall, rather. What is it? 270. 270. Okay, notice that um, I just added a zero to it. If I said 27 times 100 and put up 10 points, Mr. Fall, and ask Ms. Adams what's the answer to that, what would you say? 2,700. Notice that there was two zeros, and two zeros were simply added. So anytime you multiply something by 10, Ms. Gage, put that away. Ms. Gage, put that away. Um, all you do is add a zero. If it's 100, you'd add two zeros. If it's 1,000, you would add three zeros. Now, what they're showing here, it says the value of each place number is 10 times the value of the place to the right. And this chart shows the relationship for the number four and says look for patterns. So here's, here's four ones. And then in the tens place, 40 is 10 times that. In the hundreds place, um, 400 is 10 times 40. And then when we get to the thousands place, uh, 1,000 or 4,000 is 10 times 400. And 40,000 is 10 times um, 4,000. And then finally, 400,000 is 10 times that. Then they, uh, they talk about, it says, find 32 times 10,000 using the place value relationships. Well, here they have an example of 32 times 1. You guys know that's 32. 32 times 10 is 320. 32 times 100 is 3,200. And all you're doing is adding that number of zeros. So 32 times 10,000, you're adding four zeros. And the answer is going to be 320,000. So I think you guys can readily recognize those patterns. Let's look at the convince me. It says, Nellie says that 60 times 1,000 is 6,000. Um, because there's three zeros in 1,000. And then Kara says that 60 times 1,000 is 60,000. Whose thinking is correct in that? Miss Guerin, what do you think? Whose thinking is correct? Is it Nellie or Kara? Or Kara or whatever her name is. What is it? Yeah, exactly. Because all you're doing is 60 times 1,000. You're going to add three zeros to 60. So here's 60. And now I'm going to add three zeros. So the answer is 60,000. So everybody should have written down, that down in the convince me. Looking at the guided practice here. Number one, it says how many zeros will, I'll oh, put up 10 points on you. How many zeros will there be in the product? Now product is the answer to a multiplication problem. And the product of 39 times 1,000. So I'm just going to write that down right here. 39 <coughs> times 1,000 equals. And it says, how many zeros will there be? But I, I want us to go ahead and solve it. Ms. Maldonado, what's 39 times 1,000? Mm. Close. Can you read that one for me? 39,000. 39, okay. So the answer to that first question, how many zeros will there be? It's going to be three zeros. All right. Um, put up 10 points. Mr. Moyers. The second question is, how many zeros will there be in the product 
of 50 times 1,000. So I'm just going to write that down, 50 times 1,000. Mr. Morris, how many zeros will there be? Now, if you can't picture it in your mind, an easy way to do it would be write down 50, and then how many zeros do I add? Because we're multiplying it by 1,000. How many zeros would I add to 50? How many zeros are in 1,000? Three. Three. So how many zeros would I add? Three. Yep. Now, you can see what I wrote down. How many zeros are in that product of 50 times 1,000? Four. Four. Okay. So if you guys can't quite picture it in your head, go ahead and just do it. Do the problem. And then you can count up the number of zeros. So you should have written that down for number one. Go ahead and put up 10 points. Number two, it says, it says explain how to find the product. And remember, the product is the answer to a multiplication problem of 90 times 4 to the 10th. Ms. Papase isn't here, so it's worth 20 points now. Ms. Ugisa, first off, before we do anything, and you guys are going to see this. Look at this up here. You're going to see 10 to the 4th. 10 to the third, 10 squared. You should know what those are. I'm going to write those down over here. And if you don't know what they are, then you should write it down. All right? So 10 to the first is 10. 10 squared is 100. 10 cubed, or 10 to the third power, is 1,000. And 10 to the fourth equals 10,000. And I'll do one more, 10 to the fifth. That's going to be 100,000. And you should see that the number of zeros is matching um, uh, the exponent. And this is something I think we talked about in the very first week of school. I'm going to do one more, 10 to the sixth. That equals a million. Notice that there's six zeros in that. So let's go back to number two. And I, Miss Ugisa, Answer this question first. What is 10 to the 4th? 10 to the 4th is going to be 10,000. 90 times 10,000, which is the same thing as 10 to the 4th. So I'm going to write down 90, and then how many zeros am I going to add? 4. four. One, two, three, four. Now, the next thing you should all remember, we've talked about this before, where do I know, or how do I know where to put the comma? Miss Maldonado. Every three. So I'm going to count over one, two, three, and then put a comma. All right? So there's, and so the answer to that question, um, well, actually, I didn't explain how to find the product of 90 times 10 to the fourth. Uh, you could just say uh, you would add four zeros. To 90. All right. Questions on that? No? All right. I think you guys should be pretty good with this here. Uh, I'm looking at 3 through 5, use reasoning to fill in the missing numbers. Well, I mean, I guess you could say reasoning. Uh, use the, the math skills that you have. 60 times 1, you know, is 60. 60 times 100 is 60. And then add, three zero, add two zeros. Whoops, I put the comma in the wrong place. Sixty times ten thousand, it's going to be sixty, and then I'm going to add four zeros, and then I'm going to count every three places and put a comma. Um, look at number four here. It says thirteen times something equals thirteen thousand. Uh, Miss Ramirez is not here. It's now worth twenty points. Mr. Eberhardt. What times 13 would equal 13,000? 1,000. 1,000. Nicely done. Put up 20 points. 
And then something times 10 to the fourth equals 100,000. Uh, Mr. Camisa. Ten. Yeah, 10. And then you would just add four zeros. All right, so I'm looking at the, in, the independent practice. I think you guys should be good with that. Um, 14 through 19, use reasoning to fill in the missing numbers. You guys, we just did a couple that were like that. You should be good with that. Looking at the last page here for chapter three, section one. Uh, number one says, or number 20, uh, at a football championship game, the home team gave a football to each of the first hundred fans who arrived at the stadium. Each football cost the team $28. And I'm going to put down 100 fans. How much did the team pay for the footballs it gave away? So I'm just, I'm not going to do this one, but I'm going to ask somebody to set it up for me. Miss Jennings, how would you set up number 20? Tell me the equation you would use to solve it. I'm not looking for the answer, just what would you do? 28 times Perfect. Put up 20 points for that. 28 times 100 equals, and I'll just leave that blank. Now make sure your answer has, I'm going to draw a little square here, your answer should have a dollar sign because we're talking about money. All right, nicely done. Uh, number 21, it says, without multiplying, tell which expression is greater. So I think you guys can do that, um, but if you want to multiply, you can. And how do you know? Um, yeah, I'll let you guys just do that one. I'm not so worried about how do you know. Number 22, a truck is carrying 10 squared bushels of onions and 10 to the first bushels of peaches. And 10 to third bushels of corn. What's the total weight of the crops? So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to put 10 to the first equals what? 10. 10 squared equals what? 100. And 10 cubed equals 1,000. Then you're going to take these numbers and apply them to wherever they would fit. So 10 to the first, that's talking about peaches. So I'll come over here and I'll draw a line of the peaches. So it's going to be 10 times what? 50. All right. And then I'm looking at 10 squared. And that's talking about bushels of onions. So then I'm going to draw the line to onions. And that's going to be 100 times what? 57. And then the last one I'll look at here is the 10 cubed, that's bushels of corn. And so I'm going to draw a line to the corn right there. That's going to be 1,000 times what? 70. And then it says, what's the total weight of the crops? Well, you're going to have to multiply those numbers and then add all three of them up. Number 23, Norman bought a 16 pound bag of charcoal for 789, 10 and a quarter pound bag of charcoal for 569. What's the total weight of the two bags? So um, I'm gonna pull a stick here. Mr. Delgado, <laughs> look at this for a moment. They gave us some information that we don't need. What's the information they gave us that is irrelevant, that it doesn't matter to answer the question. I mean, here's the question. What's the total weight of the two bags of charcoal? Uh, how much does it cost? Yeah, who cares how much it costs? That's not what they're asking us. So X that out. It's not necessary. It's unneeded information. Okay? It'd be like Mr. Williams raising his hand and says, Mr. Glazer, I had sausage for breakfast. 
like, oh, okay, well, thanks for sharing that. I, I mean, I didn't need to know that. He just wanted to share it. So anyways, look for that. A lot of times you guys will have, um, they'll set up a problem for you to do and they'll give you information you don't, you don't need. All right, who was that? Who did I just call for that one? Mr. Delgado, put up 20 points. And then, um, let's see here. Number 24, there are 2,000 pounds in one ton. Uh, 40 tons, how many pounds is that? Yeah, you guys can answer 24. And then uh, 25, 26, you guys should be able to do. Okay, that's it. I'm going to end this video. Look at that. Almost kept it under 15 minutes. Stop video recording.